I believe this may be a relatively new kind of thing for Trinity College. But I thought it's important to have a gathering at least once a year where I try and share with you a little bit about the state of the college. First of all, um, welcome. It's really great to see so many of you here today. And you probably remember just over a year ago in this very room was the announcement that I would be the 22nd president of Trinity College. So I just have to tell you guys though, there were more people here for that event <laughs> than there are for this town hall today. So I'm not quite sure what that says, um, but it's still very nice to see so many of you here. That was an exciting day. It was full of promise. And actually, it's hard for me to believe that it really has been a year since that time. I think we've already done a great deal together and we are fulfilling the promise that I hoped that we had at that event standing up on this stage just about a year ago. What I plan to do over the next 15 minutes or so is recap a little bit where we've come in the last year and also outline some of the opportunities and strategic challenges that I see in the college's future. I do think that Trinity right now has tremendous momentum. And our aim is to continue that momentum and upward trajectory of the institution. If you come to commencement and listen to my commencement speech, you'll hear me talk a little bit about the fierce urgency of now, which is based on a phrase from Dr. Martin Luther King about the necessity to move forward on some things and to move forward on some of them now. Now what that means for Trinity College is that we preserve what is truly exceptional about this institution while at the same time identifying and committing to new endeavors that will really strengthen the academic experience here. What I want to ensure is that the Trinity College education is a transformative liberal arts education. Now we'll begin by focusing a little bit on the learning environment itself. We need to think about what's the optimal class size, what resources are needed by faculty members, and how can Trinity College navigate a very fast changing environment in higher education with lots of new expectations, both created by our students internally as well as the external environment. These are really some of the important issues that we need to think about next year as we're thinking about strategic planning and also as we are preparing for reaccreditation by um, the New England Accrediting Board or NEASC as you may have heard it called. Very often when people think about academic excellence, they do think a little bit about rankings. And I think many of you know that US News and World Reports is one of those ranking systems of which many of us are familiar. Now I wanna take the opportunity here to state very clearly that a top priority for me is improving Trinity College's standings and matching our reputation with the high quality of academics that are offered here. However, it does not mean that I plan to run the college based on metrics that are set by a magazine. We do need to pay attention to where these metrics interact and overlap with meaningful indicators of quality here at Trinity. For example, there are a few categories that I do think we should focus our attention on. One of these categories is faculty resources. This is a category in which Trinity College is 
significantly different from a number of our peers. And I just want you to have a small indication of what is underlying faculty resources by US News and World Reports. It's a combination of faculty salaries and benefits, um, class size, as well as the proportion of full-time and part-time faculty. All of these are considered in the category of faculty resources. To have and offer the best education, we'll have to have competitive salaries and benefits, including workload, to continue to recruit and retain top-notch professors who understand the mix of teaching, scholarship, and service here that make a liberal arts campus vibrant. And we also want to make sure that we're choosing people who care about a city, the small, vibrant city in which we live. And we want to make sure that we have faculty who are committed to all of the aspects of their roles here at Trinity College. We will continue to hire part-time faculty. We will fill vacancies when needed with part-time faculty, but we will focus on full-time faculty professors who will make their home here at Trinity College. Going forward, in order to have a coordinated effort with respect to how we are doing on some of the rankings, we will have a cabinet level committee that will monitor our progress, but we will also be working with some of the existing um, organizational structures on campus just so that we keep an eye on these metrics. And I believe as we focus on improving the quality of the education here that the rankings will follow. I have to emphasize to you that, I, that it takes time to improve rankings and I cannot guarantee any particular change in rankings over any particular time period. But what I can commit to is paying attention to metrics that are most associated with the quality of a Trinity College education. As we look towards the future, we need to think about reaching beyond our own campus. As I think many of you know, we joined edX, which is a partnership of online classes for people around the world. Several of our faculty members will offer the first courses in this endeavor beginning next fall. It's a new idea and it's a new endeavor which will raise Trinity College's visibility amongst new and different kinds of audiences. But I also think it reflects our willingness to experiment with technology and to build on already the courses that we have, a small group of courses in, one, in which we're focused on our telepresence and offering those courses in collaboration with Wesleyan University and with Connecticut College. So we're already doing a number of very interesting things related to telepresence and this should add additional support and additional opportunities. In addition, we have outstanding teaching here at Trinity College. Our location in Hartford offers a means by which we can offer a unique set of classes because we can offer them and a liberal arts education in a city. And we hope an increasingly vibrant city of Hartford. We also are just building on a platform that we already have started. There are distinctive community list, um, learning initiatives. We have internships throughout the city of Hartford, a city's program, legislative internships, and many, many volunteer opportunities. 
Um, and I'll take the opportunity to thank Joe Barber for keeping a lot of those exciting volunteer opportunities available for our students. We are strengthening our commitment to Connecticut and to the city of Hartford through the purchase of 200 Constitution Plaza. This downtown campus makes, I think, more visible our commitment to our home city, and it offers many opportunities to deepen learning experiences and partner with others in the downtown area. Faculty, students, and staff members have offered their ideas to two consultants to identify how best to use the downtown campus. And I will tell you, having read the initial report of our two consultants, there are a lot of exciting possibilities and opportunities and ideas that you already have. And over the course of the next two weeks, we will be posting the report from the two consultants so that you can hear collectively what more than 100 people on campus have been saying about the use of um, the downtown campus. The one thing I want to mention about the downtown campus is I think that we shouldn't just be taking up things whole and parcel that could be done here on the Summit campus and moving them there. We should use it as an opportunity to do something different and something creative. And I think we should also use it as an opportunity to connect with others, both other academic institutions as well as other kinds of institutions that are in the downtown area. Now, in addition to our purchase on 200 Constitution Plaza, I don't know how many of you have seen the kinds of investments that both the state of Connecticut and the city of Hartford have been making in the region. So the star is the 200 Constitution Plaza area. And what you see all around it are the various kinds of investments that the state has been making in the downtown area. I think most of you are aware that the University of Connecticut is moving their West Hartford campus to downtown Hartford. And that will be about three blocks away from the new Trinity campus. But I wanted you to get a sense of the kinds of investments that the state of Connecticut is making in the downtown area. And hence, the kinds of collaborative partnerships that we think will be available as we move there. We are going to be joining with others in the city to make the downtown area an urban center. And what I heard one president of an institution here at Hartford say is that he would love to see Hartford feel like more of a college town in the sense that you see it in Boston. It's a number of institutions getting together and really thinking about what we are doing as a group of educational institutions together. And we wanna make sure that Hartford continues to be in Trinity College's DNA. I think most of you realize that the college has been here in Hartford for almost 200 years. And now we have a concrete way to strengthen our connection to the city and to the downtown area. Now, as I talk about strengthening relationships, I also want to speak a little bit about strengthening our campus culture. I think that you recognize that I sent out a letter to the community last week, and I talked about claiming the community that we want to be. A community in which we have respect for others, we take responsibility for our actions, that we're welcoming people of different backgrounds, races, sexual orientations, ethnicity, religion, and gender. We have to continue 
to move in the direction to be the community that we want to be at Trinity College. I've already seen parts and glimpses of this community. We have already made significant progress and we need to continue to make progress. This is a critical part of the Trinity College education and each and every person in this room can and should be contributing to the sense of community that we have on campus. We will continue to build on the work of the Task Force for the Prevention of Sexual Misconduct that was supported by Carla Spurlock Evans, who is our Title IX coordinator. We will be publishing over the summer the results from that task force and making recommendations as to how to reduce sexual misconduct and other kinds of issues important for Title IX here on campus. Please understand that as I talk about a campus culture, I am not talking about removing all fun from our culture. We can have respect for each other and be the community we want to be and still have a heck of a lot of fun. Remember that part of the mission statement for Trinity College is to free the mind of parochialism and prejudice in all its forms. This is not something new I'm trying to introduce to the campus, but something that is deeply ingrained in who Trinity College is. And we're going to continue those conversations over the fall. We will also continue to move forward to strengthen the academic and co-curricular experience with a particular focus on first year students. I first want to cite the truly excellent work of all of the design teams that participated in the creation of the Bantam Network. So for the upcoming year, our incoming first year students will be actively supported by other students, peer leaders, and adult mentors in all the aspects of their life, from academics to wellness, faculty involvement to, short, to social life. All of these are important aspects. There was hard work by design teams. We did a lot of listening tours around campus. And what was very exciting, and what I just want to remind you about, is that really the ideas and the very high level ideas of what we're doing in the Bantam Networks were set out by this community in 30 years of documents that I saw about people's desire for a more welcoming environment for our students as they come in. These documents were written by faculty members, by staff members, and by other students, and has once again been a continuous theme of the way that Trinity College individuals want to interact with each other. But at the same time, we've taken a fresh look. We asked students to design what they thought was important for incoming students, and we have had fantastic and very exciting outcomes from this process. It just shows you what can happen when our students put their energy, creativity, hard work, and brain power to accomplish a goal. To all of the students, faculty, alumni, advisors who were involved in the design challenge, I want to say thank you. It began with a group of faculty members who set high-level goals for this initiative. We had campus listening tours. We had five teams of students. We had faculty, staff, as well as alumni mentors, all working together and pulling together a program that was really designed from top to bottom by students and for students. We set out an ambitious goal for in just a couple of months to design various aspects of this, pro of this program to meet our needs. Student teams 
and the mentors that supported them exceeded every expectation that I had for the process. I was incredibly impressed, as were the judges that came both from on campus as well as some of our internal campus constituencies to judge the quality of the design teams. So I wanna say again, congratulations to design team four, the winners of the best overall design. Thank you, Molly, for coming and for really helping to support this effort that we will be putting into place in the upcoming fall. I also want to thank all of the trustees who have already made financial commitments in the hundreds of thousands to support the Bantam Networks and bring these ideas to fruition. Now, one of the alumni judges who came, and it was Danny Meyer who actually came up and was one of our judges, said to me he thought this was one of the proudest moments since graduating from Trinity College. And I can assure you, it has been one of my proudest moments to date also. This is going to launch in the fall. It is going to be great. Now, I also want to mention, as I'm talking about kind of opportunities and challenges for the institution, that one of the promises that I made to the Board of Trustees when I came was that I would produce an operating budget this year with no special draws from the endowment. Now, thanks to the Planning and Budget Council, as well as the Financial Affairs Committee, we did submit a budget that is in balance for next year. So it does achieve that goal. However, the budget that we have is not the budget that we need to sustain the college for the long term. We don't have sufficient funds for financial aid, and we don't have sufficient funds to maintain this beautiful campus in our budget. If we want to create a long-term sustainable budget, we have to think about doing that and how we can do that well. Fundamentally, if your budget is not in balance, there are two things that you can do. You can increase your revenues and you can cut your expenses. And I suspect over the next couple of years, we will be talking about ways that we can do each of those for the long-term sustainability of the college. We will be seeking innovative ways to achieve saving. And I think that we should be thinking more carefully about collaborations with other colleges as well as other kinds of institutions. We have to continue to think about efficiencies in our administrative functions and model those on some of the things that other colleges and universities have done successfully. And we need to do this and at the same time explore new revenue streams. Now, this year's budget is in balance in large part because we had very strong external financial markets. We had a very favorable, favorable endowment return of more of just around 17%. And that was a key element in our budget being in balance this year. But I think all of you know that we cannot always depend on 17% returns from the endowment to be able to support the college budget. So we need to continue to keep our eye on the prize of financial sustainability in the long term for the college. Very simply put, we need to balance the funding of some of the things that we're doing now and what we want to do in the future, and at the same time, keep the cost of tuition down and increase the availability of financial aid. 
All of this is essential for financial sustainability in the long term. Now, as I speak about financial aid, I just thought I would share some exciting news with you. So um, we have a commitment to try and attract the best students to Trinity College, not just the best students who can afford to pay Trinity College tuitions, but actually attracting the best students available. And to do that, we need financial aid. We need more financial aid than we currently have. We want to continue to be able to attract students from a wide array of backgrounds. So it is why the first initiative that I started with our advancement office is one to support financial aid. I set forward for the institution what I thought was quite an ambitious goal, to raise $10 million into the endowment for financial aid in a two-year period. $10 million into the endowment, which continues to spin off money in perpetuity in two years. I did think that that was an ambitious goal for Trinity College. So I'm happy to say with this new presidential financial aid challenge, here we are 10 months into it, and I'm thrilled to announce that at this point we have raised, have commitments with over half of this in the endowment, in the bank, in cash, $9.265 million on a $10 million goal. And importantly, I want to say thank you to the alumni and friends of Trinity College who have made this ambitious goal almost a reality. I also want to mention that one donor who chooses to remain anonymous has committed to a full scholarship for an individual from the Hartford Trinity College Academy, the Hartford Magnet. Did I get all those letters right? Because it's got a whole lot of letters in it. Hartford Magnet Trinity College Academy that an anonymous donor has committed funds in the endowment to support one of those students who is qualified to come to Trinity College. Once again, thank you to the incredible support that we have had and the generosity and commitment of our alumni. When I arrived, some people said, well, you know, Trinity College alumni won't pay for financial aid. All I can say is I have not found that to be true. And I think we should say thank you. <laughs> also, I think many of you know that May 1st is the day that we hear back um, from the students who've been offered admissions, whether they will actually choose to come to Trinity College. We have had on-campus VIP days, Bantam visits. In New York City, we had an event that was really, all of these events have been full to capacity of people interested and thinking about coming to Trinity College. We will have transfer students and IDP students who will add to the richness of our class, and we are eagerly anticipating all of the new students that will arrive in the fall. I'm very optimistic about it, the future for admissions at Trinity College. I think most of you know that we've hired a new chief academic, a new chief admissions officer, but I also want to take the opportunity to thank both um, Anthony Berry and Mandy Haynes, who really pulled together the efforts this year 
to make sure that even though we were in between and making a transition with um, the admissions office, that we continued to have a, an excellent team who were out there recruiting our next class of Bantams. So thank you in particular to their efforts and to really bringing together um, the admissions staff in an incredible year. As I look back on this year, I'm reminded of really a lot of truly excellent work. And we really have to consider what we are doing, each and every one of us, to instill additional pride in Trinity College. I just want to remind you about some of the accomplishments of a few of our faculty members. Seth Sanders received a Guggenheim Fellowship. Zaid Antrim, a National Endowment of the Humanities Fellowship for next year. David Rosen and a co-author received the James Russell Lowell Prize for the book, The Watchman in Pieces. David Ruskin built on work with Susan Messino and received a grant from the National Institutes of Health. Chris Hager won the Frederick Douglass Book Prize for Word by Word, and both Chris and Rosaria Hubert were awarded National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Stipends. Our students also received national recognition for their work. Yannick Anderson is a Fulbright Fellow. She was one of five finalists this year, so we included a grant winner and two alternates. Greg Confortito received honorable mention of a Goldwater Scholarship. And of course, I need to recognize our scholar athletes. Men's ice hockey and men's squash teams both won national championships this year. The Bantam women ice hockey team and the women's squash teams both won the NESCAC titles. And the women's squash team, of course, finished second in the nation in squash. And any of you who follow me on Twitter realize that I was yesterday at Fenway Park where the coaches for the teams as well as the teams gathered in Fenway to throw the first pitch. Um, and we were recognized down there because we have so many Trinity alums who were involved in the Red Sox effort. We got royal treatment. And I just have to tell you guys, um, I was down on the field in between our two teams. And they were throwing the first pitch. And I looked around, and all of the baseball players, you know, both from its Toronto Blue Jays, along with the Red Sox, we're starting to come on the field. And I looked around, and I thought I was in Field of Dreams. <laughs> it was incredibly exciting to see the recognition of Trinity College in this setting, and that connection of our truly strong and remarkable scholar athletes. Congratulations to all of you. These are just a few of the awards received by faculty and by students this year. Now, also, I want to mention that during the course of this first year, I've made an effort to go visit each of the departments and programs. And I think I'm about somewhere between two-thirds and three-quarters of the way through, I can state with an enormous amount of confidence that Trinity academics and the quality of instruction here are simply outstanding. Simply outstanding. It's something that we should be very proud of. Currently, our reputation lags behind 
what I'm finding to be the reality of the quality of instruction here. But we do have to pay attention to our reputation. And each and every person in this room needs to think about speaking well of Trinity. What you say about this college in which you study, teach, work makes a difference. This is a phenomenal institution. We've been here for almost 200 years. And I welcome each and every one of you to join with me in showing your Bantam pride. We have accomplished an enormous amount this year. We have lots in front of us, but we've accomplished a lot. We have incredibly accomplished faculty, outstanding students, and incredibly connected staff and alums. We're located in a vibrant capital city, and we have the privilege of calling this beautiful campus our home. I look forward to our future together, and thank you.